Welcome to worship here at Holy Cross Lutheran Church. I'm so grateful that so many of you are joining us this morning. I'm grateful for you taking a moment to pause, to reflect, to pray, to celebrate God's goodness in our lives. For it is God's goodness and grace that truly sustains in the face of violence and division and fear and anger, we trust and believe in God's never-ending steadfast love for us. That same love that calls us to love one another as Jesus loves us. As we continue in this new year, we continue the work of our congregation as well. Our semi-annual meeting is scheduled for Sunday, January 24th at 10 a.m. There are Zoom links and telephone connections in the midweek e-news. If you don't get the e-news, you are always welcome to call the church office with any questions on how you might connect. Of course, in preparation for that semi-annual congregational meeting is our uh, two financial deep dive conversations as well. We're holding one uh, this, after, this afternoon at noon, as well as this coming Thursday in the evening, Thursday, January 21st at 7 p.m. Again, uh, those conversations are hosted by our treasurer and the finance committee. There are semi-annual reports available here at the church office. If you'd like to come and pick one up during office hours, you're always more than welcome. Or uh, you can certainly just contact the church office and those can be emailed to you as well. As we continue in worship, we do so with confession and remembrance of God's forgiveness and grace. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the burden of the system that systems that bind us. We turn inward failing to follow your outward way of love. We, tr we distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider the generations that come after us. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done as well as all that we have left undone. Even before our words on, on, are on our tongues, you know them, receive them in divine mercy. I invite you to take a moment to reflect, to confess your sins, and to look for hope. God's grace is vast. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give us. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day, praising you with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Our reading comes from 1 Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel. Samuel. Samuel said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Lie down again. So Samuel went and laid down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli again said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God. He did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. Samuel said, here I am. Eli said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me for all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. Word of God, word of life. A reading from the Gospel according to John. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, city of Andrew and Peter, Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses and the law and all the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, 
come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is God's word of life for us. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and Lord Jesus the Christ. Amen. This week, as I toiled, quite honestly, over the words of this sermon, writing and, and rewriting introductions and prose, I found myself finally able to put words down with clarity as I watched my kid play with some of her toys. You see, in our preparations for child number two, we have made a special big kid play area for our older daughter, a place not only to keep the small, not-so-be-friendly toys, but also a place to call her own. In it, there are dress-up costumes and a dollhouse, desk for arts and crafts, among many other things. And, thanks to Christmas this year, over 50 matchbox cars. I swear I had nothing to do with that decision. I mean, I am pretty pumped to play with matchbox cars again, don't get me wrong, but she picked them without any assistance from me whatsoever. It is those same cars that she was playing with while I was crafting these words. I, I wrote as she added personalities and voices and dialogue to each individual car as she put them in line and, and moved them around the room. And as I sat there watching her, I was struck with the incredible purity there is in watching a kid so completely absorbed in imaginative play, creating plot and adventure with the assistance of those small plastic forms of automobiles, watching as the story morphs and flows into something different altogether, void of logic at times, but fully consumed in joy. It truly made my heart feel lighter. And I honestly hadn't realized how heavy my heart had become recently. After the last week or so, this moment was not only a welcome moment of joy for me, it was a reminder of goodness. It was in a small yet powerful way, a renewal of hope. I needed that. Because this happy new year has been far from it. Wasn't 2020 supposed to end and we can turn a whole new page? I was ready to move forward and put last year behind me. I had even counted down the days, especially those after Christmas. But as much as I wanted this notion, the, the idea that everything would magically get better to be true, I also knew that it all would not end with the new calendar year. As much as I yearn for things to change quickly, I know it's going to take longer than I want for this pandemic to find a conclusion. I know that the divisiveness of our country is nowhere near close to reconciliation. 
And as much as I have tried to pull myself away from the news, this year only seems to have drawn me in that much more, glued to what is happening next. Overwhelmed by the next lowest low that I just never imagined we would get to. And I'm angry. And I'm frustrated. And I am disappointed. And I'm sad. And I find myself in a time of lament. And then sitting there, sitting there in that big kid playroom, those feelings just started to fade away. In this break from the spin cycle of gloom, while watching my kid gleefully playing, I'm reminded that what we focus on determines our outlook. What we decide to look to and what we end up seeing has a colossal impact on our view of life, both personally and also our view of others, too. What good could ever come from Nazareth? I hear these words resonate in my ears as I think about what good can come from current circumstances. Now, certainly there are differences here with the question Nathaniel asks of Philip when hearing that the Messiah, Jesus, comes from this little dot on the map town of Nazareth. And he has good reason for responding this way too. Nazareth has nothing special going for it. For us now, it certainly has notoriety, but solely because we know that Jesus grew up there. But for those of its time, it's a small village. Just a few hundred people there who have gone through some rough times. The Romans who occupied those lands had cracked down severely on the Jewish people there, most recently in response to a tax revolt, which results in ending up with many Jewish, Jewish crucifixions. There's just not a lot going on for the place. Seriously, what good could come from it? Now, Nathaniel wasn't just some guy with a prejudice against small towns. He was a student of, Jerusalem, of Judaism. At least, that's the implication with this placement under the fig tree. A common place for learners of the scripture. He is one that questions and considers, not just taking things at their word, what good might come is not merely a question of judgment, but of understanding. Really? Nathaniel says, you mean to tell me that the Messiah comes from there? Just so unexpected. And so Philip, Philip invites him, come along, see for himself. Can anything good come out of this? I find myself wondering this a lot these days. Not looking to find connection between brokenness and some larger plan, but instead to seek what might come next. To focus on where God steps in. Steps into the muck. In the aftermath of our own doing. And then transform it. We live in a broken creation, a brokenness that is in part caused not by God's doing, but our own. This is how sin transforms the world. We fail to use our gifts to feed and shelter and care for others, so there is hunger and homelessness. We decide to remain angry and judgmental, and so forgiveness does not flow forth like God's waters of grace. We seek out what we want to believe instead of what is true, and in turn create more lies to back up our original falsehoods. 
And yet where we mess up, God enters in. Not in acts of judgment, but in redemption. In making wholeness from the broken pieces. In making good where all seems bad. Can anything good come out of this? For Nathaniel, this is a question answered not sitting idle under the fig tree, but in going and encountering Christ. It was answered in hearing a call to come and see and then move into action. Can anything come out of Nazareth? Jesus enters in with a resounding yes. Out of the unexpected, met not in the destination, but while still on the way, Jesus enters in and meets us. And this time after Epiphany, as we celebrate the light entering into the world, I am struck how much more important our call is to seek light when darkness seems to overwhelm. To look for answers and not merely get lost in the questions or the unknowns or the falsehoods. To make our way through with a strength that is fed not by fear, but by hope. This process of lament is a faithful one. A topic we discussed during an online coffee gathering that Pastor Aminette convened this last week. I highly encourage you all to join us the next time we do so. It was wonderful to see one another and catch up and join in conversation. Lament is a process that encourages the faithful to cry out to God, to air frustration and pain, to bear witness to injustice, but it is not only done as complaint. The goal instead is to seek peace, to find through the struggle the presence of God walking alongside us. To recognize that whatever is happening, God's love for us never ends. And to come and see. Not focused on pain, but come and see the hope of God's promise of heaven on earth continues to appear before us. The end goal of lament is a stronger faith but only if that is our focus. What we decide to focus upon can change our outlook. I do not know what will happen this next week, but I can control how I am able to respond. We are called to be like Nathaniel and come and see for ourselves where Jesus has entered in. We are to be like Philip, too, and invite others to see where hope has broken in, to respond to those who ask about if goodness has come and gone, and then show them where the light shines out in the darkness. In times of the unknown, our response is to lean into our faith, lean into strength of hope that builds up, seek out those places of love, and then to become the hope for the future. Because we are called out from underneath the fig trees of studying faith and moved into action. It is in this way that we enter into the work of God, calling us, reminding us of God's goodness that is larger than any one moment, not merely to be idle, but to enter in. So in these next days, how might you break free from focusing on brokenness and instead see hope? 
be it out in nature, in relationship with others, in seeing kids play, where might you break free from the darkness to see the light? And how might you be transformed as well in that moment to call out like Nathaniel, there, there is God among us. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. Good and gracious God, we pray for peace in our world, in our nation, in our hearts. We ask you to come to us and guide us to be your people, the people you create and call us to be. Turn us away from hate and into instruments of love. We pray for the well-being of creation, for plants and animals, and for all that you have marvelously made. We pray that we might be bold in serving as wise steward of the work of your hands. We pray for leaders. Give wisdom to those who make decisions for the good of all. In this coming week, Lord, we ask your strength. Place your hand of healing upon our divisions. Make us see one another as you see us and let empathy guide our ways. For those lacking food or shelter, 
for those who are sick or grieving and for those who suffer, we pray that God's hand of grace would be a source of hope. At this time, we offer our prayers for those close to us we know who are in need of your healing mercies. pray today for the Holy Cross community of faith. As we do the administrative work of the church through budgets and meetings, guide us to be a people focused upon shining your light of love in our community and beyond. Bless our community of faith and give us grace to be your people. We pray in thanksgiving for the saints who have gone before us. Their lives give us a vision of the truth of your love and action. Help us to follow in their footsteps of courage and faith. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, all those prayers spoken and those that remain silent for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. At this time, I invite you to gather your elements for Holy Communion. Sharing our life, Christ lived among us to reveal God's glory and love that our darkness should give way to his own brilliant light. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. I invite you to take your bread and raise it together with mine as we remember Jesus gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples to eat. And he said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and I invite you to raise your cup with mine. Again, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. We are gathered together, even if we're separated and apart, not able to see each other, we are gathered together by the Holy Spirit. So let us pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to take your bread and eat. This is Christ's body given for you. I invite you to take your cup and drink. This is Christ's blood shed for you. Let us eat and drink this holy meal together. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in his grace. Let us pray. At this table, 
we have feasted together and know life in Christ. Strengthened for our journey, send us forth from this banquet, nourished in body and spirit, to proclaim your good news and to serve others in your name. Amen. May God, the Creator, strengthen you. May Jesus, the Beloved, fill you. May the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.